your former self has to die in order for your new self to emerge. I know that I don't know and that I have a lot to learn. I think I might know the direction and that's good for now. The previous video I did was about Candace Owens calling out hairstyles and the general state of masculinity that we have today in the whole western world. And I got to think about uh, the biases that we people have, how divided we are in our political and ideological point of views. Also it shouldn't be a surprise that the majority of human population has access to information. Every person regardless of the knowledge or wisdom level can make their opinions heard, which in itself makes it much more difficult to sift through bullshit and white noise as every person with digital access tries to voice their opinions. You quickly come to realization how people with lesser competence are the loudest out there. And there's a term for that. It's called Dunning-Kruger effect and that's exactly what I will be talking about in this video. Are you as good at things as you think you are? How good are you at managing money? What about reading people's emotions? How healthy are you compared to other people you know? Are you better than average at grammar? Knowing how competent we are and how our skills stack up against other people's is more than a self-esteem boost. It helps us figure out when we can forge ahead on our own decisions and instincts and when we need instead to seek out advice. As individualism grows and people become more and more self-absorbed, seeking help is not the first priority when you think that you're stuck in life. And also there's an issue of ego where you don't want to admit, confess that you have done something wrong or you are incompetent in a certain area. Individualism is tightly connected with egocentrism. That's why you cannot admit your faults, as it hurts your ego. But psychological research suggests that we're not very good at evaluating ourselves accurately. In fact, we frequently overestimate our own abilities. Researchers have a name for this phenomenon, the Dunning-Kruger effect. This effect explains why more than a hundred studies have shown that people display illusory superiority. We judge ourselves as better than others to a degree that violates the laws of math. When software engineers at two companies were asked to rate their performance, 32% of the engineers at one company and 42% at the other put themselves in the top 5%. It has to be a combination of cluelessness and egocentrism where you think that you are better than you actually are. This phenomenon is directly correlated with your survival ability. To understand that you have to ask yourself what is it that is surviving because our bodies are in no shape or form in need of surviving anymore at least. So there's something else that we're trying to protect. Avenge me! our ego, the idea of who we are, and confessing for yourself that you lack in some certain area that you might want to improve is signaling to your ego a danger situation. Ego doesn't want to admit that it falters, which would imply for you to go and learn something. And to learn something, you have to humble yourself. Gaining wisdom in life is directly correlated with losing your emotionality, with breaking loose from your ego, which will never happen completely. But the more you search for the truth, the more you become self-aware, the less it controls you. In another study, 88% of American drivers described themselves as having above average driving skills. These aren't isolated findings. On average, people tend to rate themselves better than most in disciplines ranging from health, leadership skills, ethics, and beyond. What's particularly interesting is that those with the least ability are often the most likely to overrate their skills to the greatest extent. People measurably poor at logical reasoning, grammar, financial knowledge, math, emotional intelligence, running medical lab tests, and chess all tend to rate their expertise almost as favorably as actual experts do. And I'm sure that you also have noticed this phenomenon when you talk to someone with a lesser competence, even though they portray themselves as being very competent within their area or within something else, maybe some social skills or knowledgeable within their profession. Upon a further, deeper investigation, you will come to a conclusion that there's something wrong with that person in terms of self-esteem. Those kind of people are always approval-seeking. They're trying to assert their meaningfulness, their worth, through words, which is a seldom a safe way to do that. Any self-aware and healthy person will quickly realize how fake that is. People who are really competent in what they do show their competence through actions, not words. So who's most vulnerable to this delusion? Sadly, all of us, because we all have pockets of incompetence we don't recognize. But why? 
When psychologists Dunning and Kruger first described the effect in 1999, they argued that people lacking knowledge and skill in particular areas suffer a double curse. First, they make mistakes and reach poor decisions. But second, those same knowledge gaps also prevent them from catching their errors. In other words, poor performers lack the very expertise needed to recognize how badly they're doing. Why do people make bad decisions? Because they lack awareness, both self-awareness and awareness of social constructions and how the world outside of themselves functions. The level of awareness dictates the level of wisdom in you. And wisdom basically is knowledge of life. When you're oblivious, naive, very detached from a society, you don't know what's working and what's not working. You imagine stuff, you tell yourself that you're good enough and your ego gets overblown, further solidifying your wrongful strategy in life. Going back to the politics and US elections, which is very important to talk about in every sense because it doesn't only affect the American citizens, it affects the whole world as US is one of the most powerful countries in the world and has a lot to do with world relations and economy. It's no secret that big part of Europe, for example, is very Americanized and have imported a lot of American culture. As an example you might remember how George Floyd riots broke loose in US affecting many other countries where we had a lot of demonstrations protests riots as well which showcases how much influence US got the whole situation with the US election and unknown outcome makes one wonder what the hell are people thinking about. We have become like cats and dogs, having ideological war, because our ego investment in our ideologies is so strong that we feel threatened whenever someone questions our political beliefs and viewpoints on societies and life in general. And as per Dunning-Kruger effect, we can easily notice how people who are loudest are most often than not less competent in the age of emotionality stupidity doesn't have any limitations if you have a digital device you're good to go for example when the researchers studied participants in a college debate tournament the bottom 25 percent of teams in preliminary rounds lost nearly four out of every five matches but they thought they were winning almost 60 percent without a strong grasp of the rules of debate the students simply couldn't recognize when or how often their arguments broke down also, that reminds me how people think that some kind of a politician could change their lives, could make something substantial that would turn around their lives. I made a video talking about how laws, regulations are made for the uncivilized people. And those ignorant people are the most invested in politics because they need guidance. They lack leadership. They want someone else to take their hands, to show them the way to fix their lives, to make everything good again, which will never happen because only person who can really influence your life is you, is the person that looks at you in the mirror. The Dunning-Kruger effect isn't a question of ego blinding us to our weaknesses. People usually do admit their deficits once they can spot them. In one study, students who had initially done badly on a logic quiz and then took a mini course on logic were quite willing to label their original performances as awful. You see, I don't agree with this statement because especially this year we had a lot of instances where people were presented straight out facts about certain points, but nevertheless, they were refusing to admit their wrongs. The ego investment can make everyone delusional because as I said previously, it's about life and death, metaphysically speaking, because as per definition, your former self has to die in order for your new self with new viewpoints, with new knowledge to emerge. So the ego does everything to protect itself to not be threatened. Presenting facts isn't enough, especially in this day and age of emotionality, when emotions count much more than logic. And I am not saying that logic is everything. What I'm saying is that truly rational people can only reach that level of rationality through understanding their emotions. It's the next level I'm talking about. That may be why people with a moderate amount of experience or expertise often have less confidence in their abilities. They know enough to know that there's a lot they don't know. Meanwhile, experts tend to be aware of just how knowledgeable they are, but they often make a different mistake. They assume that everyone else is knowledgeable too. The result is that people, whether they're inept or highly skilled, are often caught in a bubble of inaccurate self-perception. When they're unskilled, they can't see their own faults. When they're exceptionally competent, they don't perceive how unusual their abilities are. 
Boy, oh boy, that brings up memories. I remember admitting to myself that I uh, don't know what the hell I am doing. It's a very painful experience. And I am not saying that I know everything by now. What I'm saying is that I know that I don't know and that I have a lot to learn. I think I might know the direction and that's good for now. And I will change thousand times before I reach that peace of mind that I'm striving for. And for that, I need to practice. And to practice, I have to gather a lot of wisdom. And that's what this channel is partially about, inviting you to follow my journey towards self-fulfillment. Confirmation bias is a very tricky thing. It can take you by surprise, even when you think that you are being quite objective. Because bias is the doing of the ego. And as I said before, it tries to survive by any means. Being objective is all about detaching yourself from your ego. Being fair according logic. Being fair according rationale. Not being consumed with your own survival. So if the Dunning-Kruger effect is invisible to those experiencing it, what can you do to find out how good you actually are at various things? First, ask for feedback from other people and consider it, even if it's hard to hear. Second, and more important, keep learning. The more knowledgeable we become, the less likely we are to have invisible holes in our competence. Perhaps it all boils down to that old proverb. When arguing with a fool, first make sure the other person isn't doing the same thing. In my experience, there are two different kind of people who think that they're better than they really are. Young people who are very naive, haven't experienced life and think that the world is upon their reach, they feel undefeated and immortal. The other kind of people is less competent, stupid people who cannot see things beyond their noses, who think that their ways of living is the best ways, without realizing that they haven't been leaving any success clues behind themselves. Funny how people who are very incompetent and stupid will try to teach you something. And every time you try to glance at their history, you realize that they haven't accomplished anything in life. You cannot teach someone when you haven't We're accomplished something learn. yourself. And the saying that arguing with a fool, you have to first make sure that the other person isn't doing the same. Arguing with a fool is like talking to a wall. The different levels of consciousness won't find a common ground. And in order to win at an argument, you have to talk to the same language. But the other person will always win because that person is an expert in their own language. And besides, arguing with anyone is a fool's errand in general. You shouldn't do that no matter what. You have to always remember one important fact. Ignorance will always be in majority. And trying to argue with ignorance is a loose game for you. They will consume you. They will surround you. This witch hunt is turning into a circus. She's the witch. Yeah. And being right or wrong is a matter of perspective. If the majority thinks that you're wrong, even though factually speaking, you're right, you will lose. Your job is to be an observant. As they say, ignorance is a bliss. The video about how laws are for uncivilized ones. Check that one out. A very good one. Many insights. What's your natural reaction when you encounter ignorance? Tell me in the comment section below. But for now, Osain, out. <laughs>